Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we can sit back, relax, take that hello, midweek hello. break, talk about the fun things going on in the world of Linux. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and one Pedro mm-hmm. Mateus, and everybody hanging out, watching us live on Twitch. Hey, we do this live. It's mm-hmm. terrifying. It's like podcasting without a net. Or upon you, I think we, yeah, uh, no we nets. kind of need the net mm-hmm. on account yeah. of the internet. <laughs> oh, yeah. is that how that works? I thought it was full of cats, man. <laughs> And Ben's intranet. So, I, I do have quite the. I, I have more stuff in here that I never thought I would have. But hey, that's how we roll, man. It helps us make the show. What's up and new? I know right before we get started, it's like, you know what? You know what? Let's go refill the keg. And I'm going to summon the UPS human. <laughs> Refilled it was successful. Yep, absolutely. Came back with <laughs> Very a big, good. ginormous box, incredibly heavy. And um, yeah, it's like a digital preamp that we'll be doing a video on later because why not? It will be fun. I'm going to show you how to adapt some AES CPU cables and going from a D25 pin to a D9. Maybe that'll be fun. And, and kids, I got this because I'm a sucker. It was it had a coupon on it. And, this mm-hmm. <laughs> this is just an HDMI video capture. That that's all it says on the. I'm surprised it came in a box. I'm going to be honest. More surprised that it had a metal case. I think Pedro was even like, ah, all right, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's pretty good for under twenty bucks. <laughs> HDMI video. Yeah, this thing was like sixteen dollars. Uh, we're going to do some A/B testing. I was like, what can we get away with? It claims it can do 1080p sixty. On USB 3, which has me very curious to, you know, like a low cost uh, thing that'll just going to work with Linux. Pedro, what do you think of it? You're the only person who's seen it in like production because your return videos <laughs> being sent through uh, <laughs> this right now. Okay. Uh, in that case, it seems okay. Okay. That, that, that's why yeah, I have Pedro this one nice. on the desk. <laughs> <laughs> so I am testing it right now in production. So if your video dies, deal with it. Um, <laughs> okay, if the return video dies, we blame the $16 um, HDMI capture you, card. You know, you know, if we get like four more minutes and it dies, we're like, all right. It, <laughs> Break broke even on that. Oh man, what's new with you, Joe? Oh well, I, actually, this morning was our presidential inauguration, and it went beautifully. I'm so happy to hear that, and uh, it was uh, Biden did such a beautiful speech, <laughs> very presidential. So, and I've also been doing uh, lots of Linux podcasting lately, <laughs> as a lot of people know, because they see me here and on the Destination Linux Network. <laughs> doing i doing thought you both. I, I thought you did yes i well here's the thing it's it's not did because i am doing one right now <laughs> gotcha, are you, man. Uh, jill are you doing those right now as well <laughs> no but or I'm would you reference them in the past tense see i had to learn english um, <laughs> <laughs> What's new with you, Pedro? <laughs> uh, over here, well, I've uh, I've been mostly dealing with uh, work stuff, mm-hmm. and uh, I can uh, safely say that I am done with a capital F as far as work goes mm-hmm. because uh, it's yeah no, <laughs> and, 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 no. <laughs> Have you? Um, it's great. It's great that I have a job, considering you know right. what some people are currently going through uh, during the pandemic. Yeah. But I really don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just no headaches. <laughs> well, do you know what will help you cure your headache? <laughs> um. <laughs> How Sounds kosher is it to news. mention drugs? <laughs> An open source rel fort. <laughs> Built by the team at Cloud Linux. That's a ah no. Way. See that that's Yay. different. That that, that's that won't get rid of your <laughs> headache. That is uh, something for your soul. For it is called Alma Linux. Literally, that's uh, what Alma means. Uh, uh, it's uh, yeah. It's a well another um, CentOS replacement distro. Uh, this one comes from the fine five folks at uh, Cloud Linux. And Linux. it's, mm-hmm. yes, 
<laughs> and uh, yeah, it is uh, stable, production ready, RHL based, and yeah, it's effectively trying to be um, CentOS, and they say you can effortlessly sw switch from CentOS with a single um, terminal command, so you're literally just changing the repos from CentOS to theirs, uh, which I guess should tell you just about everything you need to know, and uh, this is starting to look a lot like what happened when uh, Crunchbang died back in the day. Of course, Crunchbang it was not as big as CentOS, obviously, so now... With CentOS being that much more high profile, everyone's looking at this and all the projects that do spring up immediately get some article or another. It's like, yo, there's a new replacement for the thing. Oh. Hey, man. Okay. Everybody, everybody's going to do their own little <laughs> thing, man. I just like, I dare you um, to just call this modder. The, f the first release. <laughs> Alma Mater. Yes, because allegorical <laughs> Latin phrases make the best history names, man. Um, now, yes, this was formerly known as Project Linux, and I'm guessing I'm going to call it Linux. L E N I X. I, I pronounce Linux. 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 I don't know, man. <laughs> thing but they're looking at like uh they already have a million dollar annual sponsorship from cloudflare so cloudflare's like yo this is what we're gonna be running rapid switch from centos is what you said you know i also you get bonus points if you change that to yolo and that's all you had to do just run yolo's root just did it automatically yep. did you switch over <laughs> but, <Pseudo -yolo. laughs> right uh we did see that thing that um ibm launched their no cost uh rel that can mm -hmm. be used in production for up to 16 systems. I saw that bit of news earlier today. Which, Convenient. <laughs> Very good. I mean, where do you want this, though? Because, you know, naturally, you know, the Linux's problem is the fragmentation issue. And, well, that's not there, but this is what you saw. Everyone's like, okay, we got Rocky Linux, now we have this, and I'm sure there's a third one I'm forgetting. Probably. Yeah. I'm, su I'm sure someone will be screaming if they're not screaming in chat <laughs> yeah, world right now. They will be screaming the moment this goes live. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alma is great because there's um, they're talking about no downtime and you can migrate even large servers fleets in an instant, which is wonderful. And the more classic CentOS like distros we have, the better. It, it, it'll just make make the Linux world even even happier. And uh, this one is great because it has a proven track record with the developers from Cloud Linux OS. So yes. very good. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's pretty neat. But what you should really be doing um, is switching over to a superior Linux distribution. Yes. Of course, yeah, that's not going to get us any comments whatsoever. What? No, no. no. <laughs> listen, I can only talk about fact, man, because oh, Bullseye, Debbie in love. Bullseye is getting cold. It's getting freezy, and it's you know it's almost safe to pre-order Debbie and Bullseye. I'm currently running it on Junkbox or DAW and uh, Threadbooper, which is the streaming rig I have set up. Now there are some talks um, about. Aww. I-386 mm -hmm. going the way of the dodo, and I'm kind of cool with that. This is coming from the register. All this is going to be in our show notes, but they have a quote uh, from the Debian team. They're like, hey, man, we believe it would not, we would not be able to provide security support for the architecture as a whole or on part with other architectures, which I say, which I say, good riddance. Go ahead and kill it. <laughs> I-386, just <laughs> knife it down because um, it, if you need security update... Where am I at on this? Uh, your old retro vintage hardware, you people don't have a say in this because all you do is like, <laughs> you're not, you're not doing anything productive with those machines. You're not, you're cutting it on, looking at it, clacking on the keyboard, taking a screenshot and posting it to Reddit. That's it. But like Twitter, in, but close enough. <laughs> oh, sweetheart. Retro battle stations are you know, like a word. Yes. video. <laughs> Um, <laughs> like 32 bit support, it's going to live on because you remember Canonical's like, We are going to do it, we're going to pull the switch on 32 bit. To which I, I was already up on the hill, I had my chair on, I had the popcorn made. I sat <laughs> down, I'm like, You know what? Somebody needs to pull this trigger at some point, go for it. And they backed out because even, even Steve was, <laughs> Valve yeah. was like, Uh, we're looking at other options now, right? Oh. 
I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> if you want to play with Bullseye, Debian works with, you know, if you're currently running Buster, it's easy to change out your repos, uh, switch those over to testing or Bullseye. If you switch them to testing, that's effectively a rolling release. So it's always going to be um, latest and greatest, cross your fingers. Uh, Bullseye, once we get that freeze in there, that's where it's going to stay. And eventually you'll just stop running regular bullseye um you can give it a try i haven't run into any gotchas on either of these boxes and i in, in closing your honor the only thing i will say is what i said on twitter <laughs> why the debian project has decided on 250 alerts for their real-time kernel is still one of life's greatest <laughs> mysteries because <laughs> debian you have almost a perfect system for audio production right up until we get to you now, to your credit, you actually ship a full RT kernel, which doesn't do me any good because I got to mm-hmm. <laughs> recompile the kernel and switch that over to 1K. I, there's proprietary drivers that don't like those kernels that, very much. No, it's not even that. It's just with the <laughs> mid time. Also, enable HDD by default or HPAD. Please? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and I was actually really sad about this, obviously. Uh, they're deprecating i386 in the next Debian 12 release. Won't be good for all my old computers. <laughs> but I do understand the security issues. But for those of us who are coll- collectors and want to keep their machines running, it's nice to have newer software on them. And um, this but will also Joe, affect... Joe, <laughs> is it really vintage if you're running modern OSs? That's not even period correct. You get points oh. off for that. Um, no, 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 no. I usually, I usually, in fact, most of my old machines, I have dual boot. I keep the original OS that was on there. The, like, my 386 has a version of Linux on it from Why would you do that? You're 90s. wasting hard because I'm sure you have period correct hard drives in there of the original <laughs> yes, sizes. Yes, I do. So. And then I dual boot to a newer <laughs> OS on them just to, to see how, how much speed I can get out of them because with the improvements in, in Linux so and, for instance, the Mesa drivers, point, things they, work they better. Go over to the corner they cut it on look at the blinking lights and cut it off all right oh but it's not just me and the vintage computer no, it, collectors it, i'm not throwing i'm just using you as because you're here you, you speak yeah. on behalf of all people it's okay jill yeah. it's my turn yeah. next yeah. Uh, see i have a uh, thinkpad t42 which does very much require those uh 32 yes. bit uh 32 <laughs> bits of operating systems uh, and uh I, I did take some issue with some of the stuff that they said. It's like, oh, no one is actively mm-hmm. using uh, 32-bit UEFI. And to which point... Hold on. He, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, he's <laughs> digging it out of a pile. He's having to dust it off currently right now. Very good, you see this? <laughs> this is an x86 Asus tablet uh, uh, that requires a 32-bit UEFI. Is it charged? No, I don't think so. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it requires 32-bit UEFI, which uh-huh. never actually worked with Linux. So y'all need to uh, <laughs> the foo. and <laughs> the uh, the other bit, which I do agree, I do very much agree. There was another uh, developer that made a comment that said that. Mm-hmm. Uh, let me quote this specifically. The there are an order of magnitude more people with i386 kernels and thus presumably i386 hardware than there are for every other non-AMD64 release architecture combined. There's more people running 32-bit Linux out there than there are running ARM, uh, be it ARM HF or ARM64, be it uh, PPC, PPC64, yes. yeah. be it whatever. So, so hang on. Uh, so there's more people that are running Windows than Linux. So you're saying Windows is better using your. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I'm saying no. if you're going to drop support for something, maybe start with the stuff that people aren't using as much. Aren't using. Exactly. <laughs> and Pedro, Which to is your, what, your point. Okay, is hang on. Developers this, usually this, do. NASA, this makes perfect NASA sense. Has, NASA is using 32-bit wrecked, embedded right. systems <laughs> up in the space station and because you know of what? security and they're, you know, hardened. It's definitely been hardened. And they can pay for that support. <laughs> what they can't do is expect, like, I do not want any security vulnerabilities introduced because the uncharged thing Pedro has. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, 
Debian. I have it's supposed a to be the Swiss Army knife. I can go get it. Well, yes, Jill, exactly. install an older version of Debian and it'll work just Well, fine. yes, I can. I can do that, but I won't get the latest version of uh, Blender uh, to try and uh, test on my 386, uh, which does behalf, work, by the way. On behalf of the Debian team, uh, <laughs> let me let me uh, answer your question. And <laughs> I don't know. Uh, here's what I want to know: Are the people um, still like screeching, like I don't have the latest updates for my PPC Mac? I'm like and <laughs> okay, yes. <laughs> So, uh, let's just keep the Debian train rolling, man. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> no, so this A is really reasonably awesome. popular architecture at this time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so awesome. The Mobian Community Edition Pine phones are now available for pre-order in the Pine store. I was waiting for these ones. And it's a, they're aiming for a mid-February 2021 dispatch. And for those of you that don't know, Mobian is a Debian-based Linux distribution tailored to run on smartphones and has been actually one of the distros I've been wanting to play with, play with on the Pine devices. When I get my Pine tab, I'll have fun playing with this one. <laughs> and uh, what's really awesome, like before, the previous community editions by Pine64, uh, we have $149 for the 2 gig of RAM with the 16 gig eMMMC and $200 for the 3 gig RAM, 32 gig eMMMC plus a bundled USB-C dock. So we get all the, the wonderful beauty of Debian on the Pine phone and it even has the Debian squirrel, swirl, a squirrel. <laughs> Squirrel. The Debian squirrel. The Debian squirrel. The Debian squirrel. Someone, someone bang suggest that, please. Uh, we'll leave that as a show title. So, one of the things I'm thinking about, I mean, with a Pine phone, 100%, I'm looking at it, it's 149 bucks. Why I haven't just insta bind because I, I loathe, like, the little mobile. Device. Give me the tablet. I'm like, we made a tablet for you, then. I'm like, but you gave it a 720p screen. Uh, but... Check this out, man. I like the removable battery in the Pine phone. I love the low price. I like the SD cards. Get that going forward. Not a fan of the plastic case, but hey, man, you got to make certain sacrifices at the price. And the mono speaker. But eh, how many times are we going to listen to it like that? I'm, I'm interested in this. You know more about this, Pedro. You have a Pine book, right? Yes. <laughs> Is there anything preventing anyone who currently has a Pine phone from just installing the Debian remix on it, like the KDE. It's just something, it's a, it's a fun little hacker uh, device, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Uh, and there are, uh, I don't know if there's one for specifically for the all winner A64 chip, but there have been multiple um, Debian based operating systems ported to the Pine phone. Most of them mm -hmm. uh, start with a U and end in Buntu. So, yeah. <laughs> The uh, there there is absolutely a way to do it, and this one just happens to be the official. Yeah, let's just do a mobile variant of Debian and make sure it works out of the box in the Pine Phone. Well, I always Which, think like I'm like, so are these awesome. things ready for drive time? And you get down to the stuff in red. You're like, yeah, oh, okay, give me <laughs> For developer, and that's what these are tinker. I don't say I say it very lovingly. These are tinker toys right now for developers, and uh, there's something to play with. This is not. This is yeah, not a daily drive. It's beta. <laughs> I, I have yet yeah, to see anyone is. answer my question. Like, <laughs> not that I care, to be perfectly honest, because like most of you at home, if one of my devices rings, there's the... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> followed by, oh, right, right, you have that function. But I wonder, like, how's the uh, cellular modem hold up in one of these... Uh, it works. I don't know about quality, but we have a bunch of people who watch the show who will probably be able to let us know. The mm -hmm. one thing that I want is uh, a version of this because the screen is pretty good. It's 1440 by 720. That's very nice for like a uh, five inch screen. That's yeah. plenty. Uh, the uh, What I want is something with enough RAM that it's not constantly swapping. And in 2021, mm -hmm. three gigs of RAM, I'm sorry, <laughs> but yeah. even on a phone, doesn't cut it. Four is the bare minimum. So uh, I'll wait for that version to come out. <laughs> yes. As a buddy looking for the four gig tablet that Samsung's like, what we make. Oh, we know we're the only company that makes one that's decent. You're going to spend 300 bucks. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
I, I'm, I'm with you on the RAM, the memory RAM, but I would. <laughs> Fine. Just 1080p <laughs> screen. And I'll give you an extra hundred bucks for a tablet. I just. <laughs> yeah, in the tablet, if it's going to be like a 10 inch screen, 1080p minimum. I need a tablet. I'm sorry. Outside of just how adorable it is watching me trying to use a six inch mobile device. <laughs> Jingos. Speaking of touch screens, man. Yeah, this is cool. It's kind of a, uh, I don't know where I'm at with this. So right out of the gate, they're going to say it's the world's first iPad OS style Linux distribution. They get a bit. Yeah. Okay. Here, here we got some. Mobile first, it's well designed. UI and UX multi touch gestures are supported and it's compatible with the Surface Pro 6, the Huawei MateBook 14. And okay, we got to check the devices. If they're That's web the ones. Two. <laughs> oh, the, the, those are the official ones, yes. <laughs> Way to build that up. Um, <laughs> it's going to have several basic mobile Linux apps, calendar, timer. All right, all right. Full function, it can run as a desktop. Trackpad gestures. How much are you willing to? Well, it's Linux, so it's probably going to be free. That that is already mm-hmm. better than most distros out there because your Ubuntu's and your Fedora's like touchpad gestures. Mm-hmm. They're just not there. Not you need there. to install yeah. stuff Do, on top mm-hmm. of the operating system to get them working. Does it count as gestures <laughs> when you're like flailing around with a train to get it to do something? Yes, uh, <laughs> so. you can actually set that as a gesture. <laughs> <laughs> um, man, I that's why I'm so old. I'm like, oh, right, two fingers, multi touch. Okay, right. I'm, anyway, back to this tablets are your future, laptops are dead. Like next week, they're all gonna uh, die. That's great. No, <laughs> are they all just gonna disappear, or uh, can I still keep them? They're just dead, no. socially speaking. No, Pedro. From now after next <laughs> week, if you, if, you, Pedro. if you see a tablet, you have to close your eyes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I need to get rid of a few tablets. Then. <laughs> uh, I don't know if the world's ready for an iPad OS like Linux operating system. I'm curious. I'm curious, but I'm going to say this when it comes to Linux on mobile and all the experiences that have been poor on my end on like Android devices, getting different types of Linux up and running, that's going to live or die by the on-screen keyboard, period. Mm-hmm. That's it. Because the second you need to type something, it needs to be front, center, and available. I'm not even going to touch this, though. Until they get a release out with the source, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm. Yeah, the, you may be, you know, uh, thinking about the other Chinese distro that uh, also has a very, very good looking UI and people were straight up calling deep in OS spyware. There's a couple of YouTube <laughs> videos on that uh, because of a non SSL URL to a data collection service, the same data collection service, mind you, that Facebook uses, that Google uses, that a few others use in the Chinese markets, which is uh, CNZZ. Uh, so, yes, there was a non SSL URL to CNZZ when you open the uh, software center in Deepin. And people were calling the operating system spyware. So, yeah, <laughs> we're going to need to see some sauce. <laughs> that's what you want to see, man. I mean, listen, if you want stuff, if you want an operating system, that's just going to strip your stuff behind your back. Just install Windows 10. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. There's, there's a tap. Oh, if you want a good laugh, put Windows 10 on a tablet. It is hilariously bad. That is, that is the only electronic it is device pretty bad. <laughs> in recent yeah. memory, speaking of bad on screen. That, that made me angry enough. Like, you know, just put that thing down. Oh. <laughs> Like, well, like other other Chinese OSs, like like Deepin OS, this one's very polished looking, and it's got a really nice design, and the, including the icons and the animations, they're very very beautiful. And um, Ven, to your point, it's not just the the on screen keyboard; it's it, it's also if the apps look nice on the tablet, because that's been an issue with Android app applications. So um, Jill has that, clearly forgotten who she's talking to. 
Um, <laughs> you know, Mr. Uh, XFC high contrast theme. I mean, yeah. this stuff done, man. I know, I know, I know. You don't care about the pretties, but the general public does. And if it's going to look Mac like, it, it better look Mac like. Oh, it'll it'll better have the experience of uh, I've had you to know, go nice scaling all of my and- life with the general public being wrong. They can be wrong on another thing. Let's make this thing. <laughs> let's get this thing fugly as possible and as before minutes possible if we only knew see that's the problem though what linux loving person that would show their face in public would possibly own a microsoft surface product oh the, oh, surface the creator is great of Lutris. Linux. Oh, right. Right. how do you do yes. uh, we'll, 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 we'll get you on, uh, see if you can try this out for us, ben. <laughs> well it's, it's but, nice yeah, it's I, OS. Oh, go ahead, Pedro. <laughs> I'm just going to say, I want to try Jing OS very, very bad on that uh, Dell uh, XPS 11 2-in-1 because... Mm, very good. Well, GNOME works, and it works fairly well, but yeah, the on-touch, uh, on-touch? on-screen on-touch. keyboard is not uh, is not great. It's missing the tab key. It's missing the alt the one and time, the F keys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, when Unity came out, I, I remember I was playing with them, like, this probably makes sense on touch. And I finally got a chance to play with Unity and later Gnome on touch. And I'm like, yeah, this kind of right up until you need to type something in. Second need a terminal, it just <laughs> dumpster fire. I'm like, well, <laughs> where's my tab? Well, I want well, my like, tab. <laughs> where's my keyboard? Okay, we got we to gotta take care of this. So Arm, Arm's dead. The new hotness is Risk Five, And the only problem with Risk v is... Price. Yeah, stuff's Price. expensive, yo. Yeah, and it's been the problem for a long, long time, but there have been moves to try and make it more affordable. A while back, there was the uh, Odyssey, um, which had the uh, Star 5, uh, what was it called? I can't remember five. what it was called. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was one of the <laughs> Sci-5 uh, micro ATX, mini ATX type of uh, low-cost motherboards that came with the uh, Risk v processor in them. This time, well, they're going for the Pi. It's a single board computer, and it's the uh, Beagle 5, or Beagle V. It is $150, which, considering this is Risk v we're talking about, that's positively... Uh, Wonderful. Cheap. That's, <laughs> that's pocket change for the for that kind of architecture, uh, and yeah, it, it comes with a dual core, but this is a Risk V dual core, so eight threads of uh, 1.0 gigahertz. All right, and it has um, an NV DLA engine with a single core, and a uh, bunch of other stuff built into the SoC. There's your typical uh, USB and um, gigabit Ethernet ports. So if if you've seen a Raspberry Pi, you might be uh, tempted to look at that and go, oh, it's another Pi clone. Sort of. Completely different mm-hmm. architecture. It even has a GPI opens. But yeah, <laughs> that that's that's a very nice price for what it is. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And and yeah, the initial one's supposed to be 140, like Pedro was saying, for eight gigs of RAM. And lower cost units with less RAM are expected in future releases. So this is real yeah, we're we're looking forward to this one. To have something that's so, you know, risk risk five is so um, runs so low powered. And uh, yes. it gets a lot of performance for the power ratio. So really good. That's going to be interesting. Pedro, are you just dying to get one so you can buy an obnoxious heat sink and stick on it? <laughs> I mean, I already have the heat sink. <laughs> I couldn't fit it in any of the uh, current Pi holding devices. You so. would get so many bonus points if you dribbled the back of that out. And just... <laughs> Uh, I actually saw someone on Reddit that dremeled the back here because the fan is right here. Uh-huh. It's just that it's just solid plastic. There's no vents. So, you know what? Keep it portable, yeah. but let's liquid cool it and we'll put the pump in a backpack. <laughs> uh, like the portable VR uh, kits that you have a backpack that's a desktop computer. Yeah, we'll call it the VR boy. <laughs> <laughs> the VR boy. Oh, yeah, it'll come with a tripod. <laughs> but technically, it's portable. <laughs> but yeah, this I do like the idea of a low cost um, 
arm, uh, not arm, um, risk V type of device, single board computer. Awesome. That yeah. makes uh, that, that particular form factor is proven at this point. So that's a very good way to get people interested. And, uh, yeah, I, I've been curious since I saw that micro ATX motherboard. Uh, what's it called? The high five unmatched. There you go. Yeah. Okay. That was uh, the, it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, um, but that was seven hundred dollars. That 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 that's a bit much for a, a toy, effectively, yeah, well, because uh, I'm not take, a developer. For a for video, it would just be a right. toy. No, I, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know. I mean, you could frame it and put it up on the wall or something. No, I like to play with my toys. <laughs> There's some <laughs> Raspberry Pis in your house that would argue this point, Pedro Mateus. Why do you think I put it in a Game Boy? <laughs> Out of shame. Why? <laughs> so something we've been following is Apple's new hotness. I think the industry's kind of followed it. And a lot of people following it because we want to see what's going to happen, what can be done with ARM. You know, RIPX86. You know, Jill's like, no, I386. And the industry's like, we're getting rid of x86 altogether. Aww. Uh, yeah, it's about time. Apple, Apple had to do its thing because, you know, Apple's never first, but they're usually first to market with a, here's a product. So everybody else is like, stable. Hey man, yeah. we're going to make it. And we're <laughs> going to copy that. And, and it works. So of course, so you want to run Linux on it. And of course we're talking about the M1, that little yes. chip that they've designed and it's available in the Mac mini and, um, the new Mac laptops and all that fun stuff surprisingly good performance. I mean, everyone seems to be generally pleased with it. And of course I'm sitting back going, but then it does stop with cooling. Let's see what it can really do. Cause I, I personally mm. believe that this thing's not turned to 11 by any stretch of the imagination just yet. But getting Linux Very on true. it, Jill, getting Linux Yeah, on so we got Ubuntu on the Silicon, Apple Silicon, um, once again. Um, this time, uh, Chris Wade, the CTO of Corellium Linux M1 development, said on Twitter that Linux is usable now on the Mac Mini M1 and um, booting from a USB and the Raspberry Pi Ubuntu desktop. And of course, it uses software rendering for GPU acceleration for now. But I'm sure hardware is going to be worked on in the future, just like what Hector Martin has done with the Asahi Linux we talked about last week for the M1. And uh, this is this is it's it's just nice to have another Linux being developed for the M1. And uh, you know when Linus uh, um, asked Apple to make a Linux work on their new M M1 chip, uh, now the community has. Uh, Come in and <laughs> said, we're going to do it. Everyone, crack yeah. on. <laughs> crack on. <laughs> I like it. I'm happy to see this. This is extremely early days. We were talking in the pre-show about, I was talking to Pedro about, I remember the early days of like Yellow Dog Linux and getting Linux up yes. and running on um, back then. You know, the Macs, Risk. Yeah. yeah. The G4s and G5s. No, it was sketchy. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but it was a fun time. Now, personally, I'm interested in this simply because, you know, when this is completely... Something is going to be missing. Networking. That's up and running. That's kind of the important thing because I want to make. Sort of. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just trying to have a good time, Pedro Mateus, and you're just not, you're just not going to let me have this. <laughs> There's this, no this Wi Fi's, apparently. It's just you got to have a USB C to Ethernet dongle. <laughs> Oh, hang on. I exist yeah. in this universe <laughs> where I don't put appliances that have Ether Noodle ports on Wi Fi. Call me an oddity. It's not, it's not a laptop. You need the, mm. the dongle. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> it means it doesn't work even if you plug it in. <laughs> well, if I plug the dongle in, it dongles. Yeah, <laughs> you need the dongle. <laughs> what do you get against dongles? <laughs> it means USB C networking is working, but that that that's about it. Here, here's the <laughs> scary. <Ooh. laughs> that's HDMI though. <laughs> it's still <Yeah>. dongle. <laughs> it is technically yes, it is. It's got a. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, okay, it's so not just what the box cable length are we talking back. about? Listen, man, this what is a family length? show, or I'd show you my dingle too, all right? So we're just going to stick with dongles. 
Okay, I, I do have a question about that. What What's the cable length that determines whether something is a dongle or a peripheral? Uh, it's somewhere between it's sufficient and you're overthinking this joke. <laughs> <No. laughs> or we can call it a breakout cable. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think to be a breakout cable, you got to do more than singular. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it needs to split at least more Have than several, one. <laughs> like a component breakout cable. <laughs> Listen, man, this, this, is a, this is anything can be a breakout cable if you believe it hard enough, right? <laughs> I guess you could technically split that out into two. <laughs> well, I mean, that's not even a challenge, man. Give me some scissors. Um, but yeah, with the M1, I'm. Curious because you're looking at like I'm looking at headless applications like music DOS completely silent, bandless plex boxes, beefy plex boxes, not something that can mm -hmm. barely choke through 1080 60. We're talking about something that can do UHD 60. Hmm. Okay, possibly that's going to be down the line, <laughs> but I'm going to keep an eye on it because I'm going to be too busy looking up anime from the command line. Yes, <laughs> yeah. as one does. <laughs> What this is anime? for here. Linux user right there. <laughs> I was I called it. Uh, yeah. Dot we basically find anime scenes by image using your I, I love throwing useless terminals. Well, I mean, somebody's like, this isn't useful. Wait, hang on. Yeah. Useless Vin. I've been waiting my whole life. You've just completed me as a human being. 99.3% go, not 0.7% make file. And this is a wrapper around trace.mo, I guess. So if you if you get a JPEG file or bitmap or ping or whatever you can run this and it's gonna hop on the internet it's going to try to figure out what it is and give you some results of what anime the image is from <laughs> now yep. what i really like is the animated gif the animated gif uh <laughs> on the page shows a c prompt and yes, that's running a power slash wrong it's, it's a c prompt wrong which is <laughs> interesting choice because you know, I personally don't believe nature has ever produced a creature more terrified of the command line than a Windows <laughs> user. So Windows <laughs> gamers. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a distinction to be made there. No, no, Pedro. <laughs> a, you're stuck at work and you, you do get a used WSL on your Windows box because it works yes. situation. Or B, you've opened a terminal <laughs> and you're a hacker now. <laughs> I do keep PowerShell open, yes. So... In all seriousness, it does support JPEG ping and JFIF or J -fif. JPEG, basically. Yeah. JFIF. <laughs> Quick start. It's easy to set up. I mean, it's go, man. You can clone and bang it out and go run, man. Go. And you're done. So I, just, I love, I know these things are silly, especially applications like that. And if I see one, I'm like, come on, that's one of those things you play with once. And we can't have the, the things you only play with once and never use again, but it's still neat segment on the show. I, uh, I, I know a lot of people, myself included, who like the animes and uh, as uh, mm -hmm. Nemo so correctly uh, <laughs> pointed <laughs> out, it's pronounced mole. <laughs> mole? But mole. Mole. Uh, but yeah. Mm. The... The... Um, the way that it does it is very, very well done. It's image recognition, and it gives you the name of the anime. It tries to figure out which episode it's from, and it uh, goes through uh, like the information that of that anime to tell you whether or not it's, you know, the saucy kind of anime. So <laughs> wait a minute. So so is there somebody sitting around watching this right now, going, a real anime connoisseur wouldn't need a tool like this. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. There's, I'm sure we triggered some elitists along the yeah. way. <laughs> Not just but there's anime. There's so ones. many series you can't so, could uh, you, possibly have seen them all. Did we call that gate weaving? <laughs> mm -hmm. <All> right. <laughs> uh, this is just the answer to uh, everyone whenever you see like anime picture used for literally anything. Mm -hmm. And there's always that first comment it's like sauce. Now you can just save the image or run this towards that image and it'll tell you what the sauce is All right. there you go <laughs> so if you want google reverse image search with a bunch of extra steps thrown in this is for you yep yeah. <laughs> well it reduces google line. image search a little bit <laughs> <laughs> <Drag>. <laughs> because you get the name directly 
<laughs> what if you can't read, Pedro? How did you turn on your computer? <laughs> With a button on the front. <laughs> and you opened the up the website <laughs> and you ended up on YouTube. Listen, man, I bought a Windows 10 PC. So, I mean, wh- what am I not living up to your expectations? Here? Oh, <laughs> did you tell Cortana to open YouTube? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I'm a hacker. <laughs> I mean, if you can use Cortana, kudos, Master Chief, it, because... If you can make it work, that, that's the qualifier. <laughs> oh, does it still do that? Is that like the built-in default on integrated search? Mm-hmm. It, it's yes. like you're, if you're installing buddy. Windows, it starts talking to you. And now we have some important setup to do. Nope. Shut up, Cortana. Nope. I draw the line <laughs> at my OS talking to me without being prompted. <laughs> it, it, it makes a uh, clippy look downright uh, vintage. A clippy was pleasant compared to yeah. Cortana. <laughs> well, it, uh, breaking news: we just found out that it does not work in New Zealand. So good on you, New Zealand. No. <laughs> That's, I was going to be mean there for a second. No, but no, no, don't. They got enough problems. <laughs> So, beautiful people, if you like what we do, uh, you can always head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We have a bunch of ways to support the show because we do mm-hmm. not have commercials. We are listener supported 100%. We got Patreon, we got merch, PayPal, wish list. Uh, again, best way to support us become a patron. We do, if you got 16 quarters a week to spare, we would love to have a more thousand or like 17 quarters a week, bunch of levels, bunch of rewards, up to including access to our Discord, an extra bonus show. A little behind the scenes stuff, early access to some videos where you can kind of chime in, like, Vin, you're doing something wrong. You need to fix it. And I'm like, eh. and sometimes <laughs> I might fix it. But we got some new people to thank this week, Joe Bryan. Yeah. So we got Daniel Y, who's a new Patreon. Thank Woo-hoo. you so much. <laughs> Yoo hoo. And um, Air EXE, um, which is Alex. <laughs> Alex, which we so, got to mention, um, interviewed. Alex, he's a yeah. developer of um, the Heartbeat, Project Heartbeat, and he was yeah. on uh, Lightning Zoomcast Weekly last week. Go watch that. It's available in podcast format. I think we have a YouTube channel. So you yeah. can Oh, we, we have a library thing now, too. Ah. Okay. Don't ask me how to get to it, but it's there. I set it up because I was like, do I have to do anything? They're like, no, sync. Actually, I just want to do it out of morbid curiosity. And it's like, I want you to sync our content. And I think it took it a week. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that's the thing. Uh, Alex, thank you. Cause thank you, you for the sub. Yeah, became a Twitch sub along with yeah, Mr. With... Finch. Yes, Mr. Finch. And the reason I bring up Twitch subs is because Alex was uh, fantastic enough to test. Because I think Pedro was, was like, if, oh, if you become a Twitch sub, you get access to our Discord too. I'm like... That theory is correct. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you have to have your Discord uh, sync to your Twitch account. I, and the moment you subscribe, you get... Bling. I hadn't <laughs> witnessed anyone successfully just run through it and pull it off. Because most people that subscribe on Twitch are also patrons. And so they're just LinkedIn. And he did. It worked. And everything works. So that's the thing you can do if you get that extra Amazon... Um, Prime, which I'm guilty of not yes. doing anything with until halfway Ooh. through the end of the month. I'm like, here, use that. You get that for your month. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got to use that for us, Ben. <laughs> I, uh, like I do. <laughs> I don't remember to do it, Joe. So. Aww. <laughs> I, fortunately, Twi- Twitch has got a thing now where you can do multiple months, which is great yeah. because I will forget to subscribe to other people until I go to type something, which might be every five months in somebody's background channel. I'm like, oh, oh, mm-hmm. oh right. I need to renew that. <laughs> so, you need to be a sub. <laughs> so thank you for like making this show possible. Patreon.com forward slash Linux Teamcast if you want to be one of the delicious psychopaths and get some bonus sodas. But I got to do something about this chair. It's getting too squeaky. squeaky. It's time. Oh, well, it's a penguin raspberry pie. <laughs> it's an off-season uh, penguin. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> With cinnamon. I don't trust cinnamon. I, I, I like cinnamon. Yeah, I like it looks cinnamon like very, very much. Not the dust up environment, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are your thoughts on pine cones? <laughs> Uh, I mean, I tried eating a few, but they're a bit too tough to for me to. They taste great, but oh, yeah, okay. no, they're a bit uh, too crunchy taste, for me. Then they taste too earthy. Too earthy. <laughs> <laughs> 
I shall pine for my teeth later on. I don't know. It, it, uh, the, <laughs> I just wanted to know what it sounded like to have somebody try to like humble brag that they ate a pine cone. I'm like, okay, have fun with that. <laughs> want some crayons to wash that down with. Um, <laughs> no, but I'll take that stick of glue. Mm, that's where it went. <laughs> Anywho, so uh, uh, go ahead and tell me that you immediately didn't think of like Neo. Your this is so yes. awesome. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw you post this in the uh, show and I was like, Your hut? No, Yar, Yar.io. It's uh, Raspberry Pi 3B, plus, which you don't see a lot of nowadays on accounts of the Raspberry Pi 4 basically being amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this one uses a 3B, plus, and it. Once again, I do need to uh, just give mad kudos to the Yara.io people uh, who created the full list of equipment for what you need to build your own Yara.io Micro 2. And <laughs> it's a screen from uh, Pi Maroni, and there's a um, cheapo keyboard that you can get off eBay and the uh, case you can also get, uh, I think you can get it on Amazon. And like basically everything they used, they have a list there for what you'll need. And that's amazing because we see a lot of those projects that don't have a list of this stuff. <laughs> yeah. Really? Pedro, you're not allowed to own this. Only real hackers can use this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, only real hackers with USB mice. No, because no, they, no this you one have to. Doesn't even have a touch screen. <laughs> it, it runs Kali, so you got to be a legit hacker in order to run that. Oh yeah, yeah. I hacked like three Wi-Fi Lead networks hackers. yesterday. First off, you got to install like six Linux. <laughs> then, <laughs> and then follow that tutorial on that website that, so you can uh, capture those IVs. Real good. I am so <laughs> down with this. I love seeing something that is, you know, this is aesthetically pleasing. This, the TSA acceptance factor, sans the dingles and the dongles, that's something you can get through airport security with without too much. They'd look at that and be like, all right, fine. You can get oh, it's uh, one of those. Okay. Yeah. He's like, I, I, I don't even want to ask. And, uh, it's a slick little case, man. I mean, it's well engineered. Beautiful. Screen resolution, but on the retro side. But uh, the big killer for me, Jill, is it's a Pi 3. Yeah, so that's really cool. And to me, I just, when I saw this, how how beautiful it, it was, it just reminds me of the uh, pocket chip, which which I have in my collection. And except that you build it yourself and it is much more powerful. But it's, there have been other Raspberry Pi projects like this, but this one is the cleanest looking one I think we've ever featured. It's really amazing. Yeah. And it's battery powered and it's 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 beautiful. It really, really is. Yeah, it's got a thirty five hundred milliamp Lion rechargeable battery, so mm-hmm. it'll keep it up and running. I mean, you can get to like another power outlet. It'd be fun. I guess that is one of the reasons to have the Raspberry Pi three. Is it slightly lower power draw? <laughs> no, that's true. That is true. And then, you know, last time <laughs> and lower I, heat. <laughs> I was yeah. playing my Raspberry Pi. I was playing with my Raspberry Pi Zero, and I'm like, you know what's missing? You know what's missing for my retro pie experience? An Epson printer, Jill. Yes. Yeah, so this is awesome. So there's a new release of Raspberry Pi OS, and it's the first release in 2021. Yay! And there is a great update to the Raspberry Pi OS accessibility feature features, which I was really happy about. In the previous release, there was only support for the Orca screen reader in Firefox, which had to be downloaded separately. But now there's a screen is screen reader screen reader support <laughs> in the default Chromium web browser, which has been updated. So now you don't have to download another browser, although I do recommend Firefox. <laughs> so for those of us that are visually impaired, this is really, really great. And uh, Ven found some interesting, uh, uh, neat, neat things that are happening uh, in this update. That's a way to sugarcoat what I wrote, John. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, the first thing I'm going to start out with, uh, this update is finally going to, well, on mobile. <laughs> Some of you are like, really? It just started working right. Flash is dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Dying a fire flash. You won't be masked, but um, that's the thing. Now, Pulse Audio now works in stereo because Pulse Audio uh, is Pulse Audio. And just be grateful that it makes any sounds whatsoever and you just be happy with what you have. And 
what do we have? Oh, yes. Apps and printers, as I was saying, Pedro. <laughs> my life is complete. I can use my Epson printer with just Epson, though, mind you. <laughs> uh, I, I think the performance gains of this particular uh, Do not attempt to use this the with a brother pilots. printer, for there will be consequences, and they will be grave. <laughs> <laughs> or you Lexmark. Know, all things considered, uh, <laughs> brother printers work very well with the uh, open source Guten print. That's like saying uh, don't try yeah, it with an HP. I mean, true. it's going to work, right? Yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down with it, man. Uh, several miscellaneous fixes. I mean, nothing. I, it's just kind of like a stability thing. We've kind of sorted because last release, I mean, we are going to be using Pulse Audio. I'm like, oh, good luck with that. So I'm like, oh, yeah, but the Pulse Audio we're working on getting that uh, completely sorted. And. Again, absent brother support. I mean, I don't know if just life's complete now. That's, that's it. <laughs> uh, what I saw was, um, I can't remember his name from uh, Explaining Computers. He did a video on the new uh, Raspberry Pi OS. And okay, thing he said was performance, especially playing like 1080p YouTube videos. Yeah. You can actually do it properly without it. Chugging along like crazy. Chugging along. It's, or uh, having to use it, the frame buffer like we used yeah. to have to. <laughs> <laughs> it actually works very, very well now. So kudos to uh Raspi OS developers. That that took a bit <laughs> just physically capable of doing a compliment. Uh, backhanded compliments yeah. are my thing. Yeah, like, <laughs> he would explode into a pink ball of glitter if he just threw out a straight compliment. <laughs> hey, if you want to get in touch with us, you can do that over at LinuxGameCast.com. Smash that contact fut button, fam. I almost said some words. The um, contact button. <laughs> yeah. Well, you see, I wasn't sure. It's like, what was I going to Let's be careful. We have uh, a couple of options. Like... You know, if you're a game developer or if you're an open source uh, project maintainer, contributor, or social media person, get in touch with us, man. We might have you on the show and talk about your project. You know, give us, give us some words. Don't drop a bunch of links in there. If you're going to be sending us like a gang of links, there's an email address there to do that because Slappy, our spam column, will knock that right out of the park. And some of you mm. were terribly persistent because I think once a month I'll go back and check the spam logs and some people are like, no, I'm just going to keep doing the same thing. And it's not a bot. It's somebody trying to get in contact. Just, <laughs> but drop that link. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I have to think to myself, I'm like, oh, it's not really somebody I want on the show. If they can, I mean, just going to be honest with you. Uh, the big game show we do um, every Saturday night, which is at, um, Alex on from Project Heartbeat. So we're going to be getting some more people on. I, I don't I don't want to spoil anything right now because I want to jinx it. But might, mm -hmm. might, might have a retro game developer on that has some current games. That I'm like, wait, what? Yeah. How retro? Nah. <laughs> Mega Drive. <laughs> okay. All, All right. right. Nice. It, it, it's difficult for me to consider the Mega Drive retro, but I'll accept it. <laughs> it's just re retro yes. bin. <laughs> 19, yeah. Early 1990s. Yeah, yeah. I guess that yeah. qualifies. Well, I mean, come on. People are like, man, I got my vintage Wii U. I'm like, all right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Get off my lawn. Bye. Shoo. All right, beautiful people. We got to bounce out of here. We're going to roll the credits. Aww. Oh, Darkwing, I love his, he did in chat, he posted a picture of a Debian squirrel case badge. <laughs> I love it, Darkwing. <laughs> but what we love, what we really, really love, and no, I'm not going to break into some random, uh... Spice Girls cover here. Yeah. Uh, are you, you folks, every single one of you, crazy, crazy people who decided, you know what? We like what they're doing. We're going to make sure they do more. Yeah. yeah. Why would you do that? We love all our producers. They're amazing people. Go ahead, read that real quick. Mm, uh, right. Nailed it. Colin. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you so As much. As with all things, mayo is not food. It is merely used to summon airwolf. <laughs> Don't act like you didn't know that. <laughs>